It's Fright Nights at Thorpe Park, so I'm spending the afternoon and evening at the island like no other to kick off the Halloween season. I'll be sharing my thoughts on some of the scare mazes, taking you for a wander through the free scare zones, getting some night rides on some of the park's best roller coasters, and exploring all the weird and wonderful spooky efforts Thorpe Park have put into this year's Fright Nights. Good afternoon, I'm back here at Thorpey Dorpey Park for Halloween, it's Fright Night. So we've got all the mazes, all that stuff, late night riding. Let's go do it. Oh, and these are my linen. Don't be afraid of them, they feed off your fear. Oh, it's so nice to see so many familiar faces here in Lucifer's Lair. We recognize some of you from the treacherous sins you committed on Earth. Especially you. I know what you did last year. That's a scary puppet. So a look at the opening show for Fright Nights there. So I've only been here a little while, I've got a bite to eat first. Really the first thing I need to do is get some tickets for scare mazes. So for some reason on the app, I can't seem to get an annual pass discount. So I've been told to come to the fast track um, kiosk over by Nemesis Inferno, so we'll see what they can do. But yeah, what I'm looking to do is, if, if you know me, if you know the channel, I'm not a scare maze guy. But I do want to check some out. So I'm going to do trailers because that's the one that's of most interest to me. And I'm going to do Deadbeat because that's what's new for this year. Well, tickets are sorted out and I'm about to head in and do trailers. So I've just been for my first walkthrough on trailers, my first ever scare maze, in fact, here at Thorpe Park Resort. And that was okay. It still had the same issues that I generally have with scare mazes, which is that I just don't buy into it unfortunately like I, I, sus I can't quite suspend my disbelief that I'm actually in any kind of danger whatsoever so I just become a bit like oh hello you've got a nice sack on your head oh that's a nice mask I'd like a bed like that but you know what some of the theming in there was good I really like the old school 80s cinema aesthetic there were some nice scenes in there um, I think most of them were supposed to be linked to movies but it was not always obvious which ones but on the whole I thought it was pretty good I enjoyed it I'm just not a scare maze guy, unfortunately, but I'm gonna go and do Deadbeat next. I've got that up at four o'clock. See if that's a bit different. It looks a bit more kind of ravey, which could be fun. And who's up for some spud and bass? Well, Deadbeat is up next. This is in the old Black Mirror building and they're playing Adagio for strings. How terrifying. Not sure if you can hear me above the trance, but look at Slammer sat there looking all sad for itself. Do you think we'll get this replaced anytime soon? It's a huge plot here. Lots of space for a new flat ride, even maybe a compact coaster. Well, what do you reckon? Comment down below. What do you think they should fill this space with? So I've just been for a run through on Deadbeat and while the exterior of the old Black Mirror building is quite cool here with all the ray flyers and the graffiti and all that sort of stuff. I thought that was pretty mediocre. Um, it feels like it's put together by someone who's never actually been to a rave before. As someone with, I don't know, 25 plus years of raving experience and DJing and stuff, I was a bit confused by exactly what the story was meant to be there. I mean, I think the DJ, DJ Calistro, whatever his name was, I mean, for a start, his mix is terrible. He needs to work on his transitions. Yeah, I think the story was you were going to some sort of devil rave or something, but most of the scares at the start came from people in headphones. Was it a silent disco? Because there was music playing. And then later on, it was kind of devilly masky people. It was all right, don't get me wrong, but again, struggling to suspend my disbelief enough to actually get genuinely scared or freaked out by anything. Some of the set design was cool, but I think both of those two mazes have just established the reasons why I'm just not into scare mazes, sadly. One positive I will say about Deadbeat is it is a much better use of that space than Black Mirror Maze was. That's um, it's faint praise really though, isn't it? So I'm heading around here by Hyperion now, because obviously it's the best ride here. It is still on reduced capacity and running one train uh, because of the valleying situation last week. I planned to come and do it back in the dark, but I thought I'd come and see what the queue time was like anyway. I've also arranged fast tracks for Nemesis Inferno and Stealth in the Dark. And of course, we've got all the scare zones starting around five o'clock too. So still lots to do here at Thought Park for Fright Night. So 
also a cheeky single rider line for Hyperia there. And single rider was just over an hour versus an advertised queue time of 160 minutes in the main line. So probably saved myself about an hour there. It's still great. Row nine, which is always a winner, right near the back, so it dropped off. There it goes. And Hyperia is still the best coast in the country. Someone up there has dropped their tissues. Let's hope they haven't got a cold. Anyway, I'm going to carry on. You know my thoughts on Hyperia by now. It's, it's the best coast in the country by a mile, isn't it? Still delivers just about everywhere, apart from the splashdown section, which is still turned off, still looks rubbish, and still has those trims that bite super hard. But everything else is super awesome. Um, I love the outer bank. I love the drop. I love the inwoman. That's really grown on me, actually, because I wasn't blown away from it at first. And of course, the, uh, the massive dive loop stall as well. Yeah, some great elements there back to back awesome so there is a sign here that says that Hyperia will close early tonight due to obviously being only on one train and its popularity so I'm gonna try and get back down here for about eight o'clock to get that night ride if it means waiting here till past close time that's absolutely fine but gotta get the pure dark ride on Hyperia I also have to say that since removing the stage this whole area at the back here looks really shabby I mean not really a great look is it for you i mean it's not just a parks headline coaster at this point it's the company's headline coaster so down here towards the front of the park we have stitches which is one of the other scare mazes not doing that one because two was enough so i'm kind of wandering around now trying to find what to do it's not quite dark i've obviously got my fast track for nemesis inferno i've got to use within the next 45 minutes i'm just hoping it gets a little bit darker so i can capitalize on that uh, also a few extra food stalls out i think this is still left over from Oktoberfest, so you can still come down here get a hot dog <laughs> tell them to like the video yeah Do you want it? Yeah? yeah? Do you want to eat it? Yeah. Do you want to eat it? <laughs> So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep up with the horror vibes and go into Sunset Cinema who are exclusively showing an IT Chapter 1 performance during Fright Night. So I think I'm going to dive in, do the 6.30 showing while Bone Shaker Cocktails is a hearse converted into a cocktail bar. There's even a dude here trying to get out of the engine. So I just watched it 4D and I'm gonna come back to you about that one shortly. I just jumped in the queue for a night ride on Nemesis Inferno. Not too far to go, so I'm really excited to get on this in the night. And then it's off for a dark ride on Stealth 2. So I'll catch up with you shortly about everything that's been going on. Nemesis Inferno in the Dark was really good fun. It's, it's an intense ride. It's all lit up nice and red. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. I mean, you know Nemesis Inferno. It's a fairly straightforward invert layout. You've got the loop, you've got the zero G, you've got the double corkscrew, and a nice fierce helix at the end. And in the dark, that really was good. And in terms of the IT 4D showing, sorry, I'm really dark now. Uh, it was okay. It suffers from the same problem that a lot of 4D films have at theme parks and it suffers from the same problem as Ready Player One does which they also show here at Sunset Cinema and that it is just a heavily edited version of the film so it's like watching a reaction channel on YouTube but without the reaction. It was okay, some of the 4D effects were all right but um, yeah I think thought can do a lot better than a 4D cinema in that space. Oh we got some spooks up here. Oh, he said to subscribe. Oh, you got a bit dribble there, mate. Ooh. And it's so quiet around here. There's a bit of an eerie funfair vibe. So up here around by stealth, we also have the Creature Campus Scare Zone. We're about to see stealth come around here just now. Whoa, there it goes. So we've got some vibes here too. 
But first up, I'm going to go ride stealth. Well, from the fast track queue of stealth, you see behind the scenes of Creature Campus there. Anyway, let's go and launch from 0 to 80 miles an hour in under two seconds. Stealth in the dark. This has been on my hit list for some time and I can't wait. Let's do it. Well, all these years coming to Thorpe Park and riding stealth, it was so good to finally get that night ride as it's all lit up with the purple up lighting behind me. And what is there left to say about stealth? It is a super punchy acceleration, some great airtime over the top hat there. I was right on the back row, so really got lifted out of my seat all the way around. Wasn't uh, too held in by the restraint, so that was nice. And yeah, really good to tick that one off the list. quick look at Creature Campus there, the Sarpenden Society show going on up there by stealth. All good to see all the kind of the free stuff that's included in Fright Nights as well as sort of the paid things. So Thorpe I think are really good at adding a lot of extra things in to the price of the standard ticket as well. So if you don't want to do the mazes there's still an awful lot here to come and see as part of the Fright Nights experience. I just love theme parks lit up at night, don't you? Please do come up and tell us your sins. Please do come up and tell us your sins. We love to judge you mortals. Cut off all of you, my ass. You there. That's a nice thing to coach you for. I don't know how that was made. You are not by force. Just like the animals that own you. So get your coat. You, yeah, yeah. Show me something simple, you start to Something sinful? Of course. Um, punch the raccoon. Oh. You punch the raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Animals for entertainment. Yes. My favorite. Hyperia at night is the ultimate ride experience here in the UK. That was just absolutely hacking all the way around the course. The views as you go up the lift hill are incredible. The park all lit up below. London lit up in the distance. That's a special ride experience that you have to come and do here at Thorpe Park on those rare occasions where Hyperia is open late. So let's go for a bit of a wander. It's about 9.30 now, everything's closed. The main Hyperia queue actually topped out at 200 minutes there at the end and they kept it open right until 9pm so that's me running around for another couple of hours yet. So let's go and have a look at some of the park lit up at night and I'll give you my thoughts on Fright Nights in general. So that is all from Fright Nights here at Thorpe Park. It's a fantastic Halloween event. They really do go to town here, not just with the mazes, but with the roaming stuff as well. There's a lot of things that are included with just your standard entry ticket, which is always really good. And I think in terms of the Merlin offering for Halloween, Thorpe Park always stand out above the rest. 
Um, the park lit up at night looks beautiful, like as you saw there. I mean, even Vortex behind me, which is a fairly minor ride. Oh, I'm all bathed in red now, so I've got a bit sinister. Um, it looks incredible too. So yeah, really pleased I came down here for Fright Nights. Scare mazes are still not really my thing. I, uh, I struggle to suspend my disbelief. Someone will come up to me and try and scare me, and I'm just like, oh, hello, mate, you're right. And I can't seem to shake that kind of indifference and ambivalence towards them. But if you do enjoy them, then I think Thought Park have some decent ones here. I did enjoy both of the two I did. It's just that I'm not really the right audience for them. Um, night rides. Night rides are always great here. And to get on Nemesis Inferno, Stealth and Hyperia, all at night, all in the dark, all nicely lit up in their respective colours. And I think the staff here have done a fantastic job trying to get the trains out as quick as possible and trying to get as many people on during the evening session as they can. So all in all, a really good time here at Fright Nights and I think something definitely worth considering if this is your sort of vibe. And if you'd like to see my Germany theme park series, which I'm currently uploading at the moment, then the playlist for that is up on the screen now and I shall catch you soon. Cheers. Bye.